God who is forever, love endures. We wait on the Lord as surely as the sun rises. Our Lord will be with us. He quenches the thirsty heart. In your bulletins, there's an outline for a sermon. But after I heard the news and got the prayer request from Brian this week, my heart said, that's not the right lesson. God says, this church needs to hear something else. The people need to hear that I love them. Do you realize over the last couple years in this small church, there have been over a dozen deaths, separations, serious illnesses that the members of this church have had to endure. And so it raises the question, and so I want to read a, the words of a song. It's a song that's touched my heart for a good while. Uh, when my way is dark, when a nameless dread and fear, as the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks, is it all to him does he see? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Now those are nice words. Those words in themselves don't bring me any peace or comfort. But when I turn to this book, and I'm going to read from Ecclesiastes 3 to begin with our lesson today. When I read from this book, I, I hear God speaking. And it's amazing that when God speaks, it's not necessarily audible. And it's not to my ears. But he speaks to my soul. And so in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, he says there's an appointed time for everything, and there's a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to, see toge to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there to the worker from that which in which he toils? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in his time. He has also set eternity in their heart, yet so that man will not find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor, it is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will remain forever. There is nothing to add to it, and there is nothing to take from it. For God has so worked that men should fear him. That which is has been already, and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by. Furthermore, I have seen under the sun that in the place of justice there is wickedness, and in the place of righteousness there is wickedness. I said to myself, God will judge both the righteous and the wicked man, for a time for every matter and for every deed is there. 
I said to myself concerning the sons of men, God has surely tested them in order for them to see that they are but beasts. For the fate of the sons of men and the fate of beasts is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they all have the same breath, and there is no advantage for man over beast, for all is vanity. All go to the same place. All came from the dust, and all returned to the dust. Who knows that the breath of man descends toward upward, and breath of beast descends downward to the earth? I have seen that nothing is better than that man should be happy in his activities, for that is his lot. For who will bring him to see what will occur after him? Most of the time, the first eight verses are what we dwelt on in this passage. But I want us to look past those first eight verses because we are all enduring the time of dying, the time of living. He says in verse 12, That to, there's nothing better for us to do than to rejoice. And he says that we're to enjoy and be, in effect, proud of a life that we live because it's a gift from God. And for those that we've lost, they were a gift from God. And then he goes into a passage that sometimes people misunderstand and some people just write over. But when he gets down and he starts talking about men going to the same place that the, the beasts go. Don't forget the differentiation of who he's talking about. He's saying the sons of men, the wicked, the wicked's result is that they're going to die just like the animals. They don't have a hope for tomorrow. But the righteous are not like the beasts of the land. They're not like the sons of men. They're more than just men. They're more than just women because they have Jesus living in them. It makes them more than just a human because there's something more to them than just this flesh and bone. And he says that they're going to be rewarded. Their souls are going upward. So when we wonder where that phrase came from, you know, the big man in the sky, uh, going up to heaven, comes from here. We have a hope. We, have, we understand intellectually that there is a time for every season. There's a time for everything under heaven. But when the, it's not a good time, it's not necessarily reassuring when we hear this. I want us to look at another writer who writes to us. It's one that we don't normally turn to when we're, turning, when we're talking and dealing with losses, with grieving. But it's Isaiah. I want us to read the 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Because we're going to find <coughs> some words here that I think we need to hear. As a church who has lost many brothers and sisters, family members, friends, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me, listen that you may live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, according to the faithful mercies shown to David. Behold, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. But you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you not will run to you. 
because of the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him, and, be, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bear and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word, by which goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. Without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. For you will go out with joy, and be led forth in peace, with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of the thorn bush, the cypress will come up. And instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. And it will be a memorial to the Lord for an everlasting sign which will not be cut off. This food that God wants to provide us with isn't bought with money. It doesn't cost money. And he asks us, why are we investing our lives in things and spending our resources on things when there is so much that's free that God wants to give us. And he says, listen to me. That's where the food is. That's where the blessings are. That's where the abundance is. Listen to me. There's a passage of scripture that I believe every theologian and everyone that's ever preached, I think, has taken this verse out of context. Because he says, your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. If you go back to the verse before, who is he talking to? He's talking to the unrighteous. He's talking to the lost. He's talking to those who have not accepted him. Their ways are not his ways. But what about us who have accepted Christ? Aren't we doing his way? Aren't we doing what he wants us to do? Aren't his ways our ways? Aren't his thoughts our thoughts? You want to know how close you are to God? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about what God's thinking about? When you are, your ways are his ways. His ways are yours. His thoughts are yours. Now, we have lost a lot of brothers and sisters. But he tells us that his word does never comes back empty. The glass is full. Beatrice's glass is full. Harold's glass was full. Elry's glass was full. The glass was full. It was time. They'd accomplished the work God had given them to do. We mourn because of our loss, but rejoice because of their gain. How can a Christian have joy in death? Because we know that death isn't the end. Death is our beginning. And he says in that last verse, I'll paraphrase and put it in Al's words, the lives of these brothers and sisters are a memorial to the Lord. We may have a memorial service, but their lives were a memorial service for God. It kind of dulls the pain. It kind of helps me endure the loss when I realize that they're a memorial 
God has set them up as a memorial for him. That he has rewarded them. Has taken them home. Isaiah says in another chapter, in verse chapter 30. In verse 18 he says. As soon as I find it. Because that, therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who long for him. And then in verse 26. The light of the moon will be as light as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will be seven times brighter. Like the light of seven days. On the day the Lord binds up the fracture of his people. And heals the bruise he has inflicted. <clears throat> for those who he's made a memorial. For those who have taken home. They have now seen the sun of seven days. We're going to see that. Denise is going to see that. John and Liz are going to see that. They're going to have that bright day. Because God is going to heal the fracture. God is going to heal the wound. And they're going to see and be able to feel and rejoice. And be glad. One of the most read books in the Bible at this time is in Psalms. And so we're going to be spending some time in Psalms. David was a passionate man. David wrote many of the Psalms. We're going to read some of David's Psalms today. He was a man that knew what suffering was about, what loss was about, what rejection was about, what fear was about, what hope was about. But he also knew what love was about. And in Psalm 102, the verse 7 verses, this is a prayer. It says it's a prayer of the afflicted when he was faint and poured out his complaint before the Lord. Because you know when we're hurting, when there's a pain inside, when that morning comes, when those tears flow, God wants to hear from us. He wants you to tell him and share with him the pain that you're going through. You don't bottle it up inside. You don't say, oh, I know, I know, I know. I know. No, you say, I don't know. I'm angry, God. Why? Especially if it's a young one, person who hasn't had a full life. Especially if it's someone, am I sure? What if I don't know the, 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 the condition of that person's soul? Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me quickly. For my days have been consumed in smoke and my bones have been scorched like a hearth. My heart has been smitten like the grass and has withered away. Indeed, I forget to eat my bread. Because of the loudness of my groaning, my bones cling to my flesh. I resemble a pelican of the wilderness. I have become like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I have become like a lonely bird on a housetop. I'm hurting, Lord. I'm hurting. Have you ever gone out on a cold winter day and you've seen a bird sitting on a branch or sitting on a wire or in this case on a rooftop? Desolate, lonely, cold. But you know what? If that bird could think or could talk to you, it'd say, I'm not forsaken. I haven't been forsaken by God. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm hurting. 
But one thing I do know, I am not alone. Don't ever forget that. When the pain comes, when the burden comes, when the anguish comes, when the anger comes, when the fears come, you're not alone. He's here. He's in this audience with us today. He's in your heart. Let him know what you feel. Let him know what you think. In Psalm 86... In the first eight verses, and in the last sentence of the, of the last verse. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. For I am afflicted and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am a godly man. O you, my God, save your servant who trusts in you. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day long. Make glad the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and give heed to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I shall call upon you, for you will answer me. There is no one like you among the gods, O Lord. Nor are there any works like yours. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. When I have had to endure loss. When my wife died. I voiced my anguish. I voiced my anguish and hurt so forcefully that my son and my preacher were afraid they'd had to put a a watch on me. They were afraid to leave me alone because the despair that I was going through, they were afraid would overwhelm me. And I had to reassure them That my despair and my loss was not going to separate me from my love for them and my duty to God. Because I knew he cared. Even though I was hurting. Even though my world had just fallen apart. I still had a reason to live. The song that got me through that period of my life was the song Amazing Grace. And I tell people usually when I, when I talk with them or consult with them or console them is that each person has to find their own way to grieve. My way of grieving was to set a speaker here and a speaker here, to lay on the floor between them, turn the volume up maximum so that the windows were rattling, put on repeat, and play this alternative music version of Amazing Grace. And sometimes I would lay there for half an hour, just that song playing over and over and over. But it was nourishing my soul. It was restoring my soul. So that I could then say what we all need to remember. O Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, Thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountains grander and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, and when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die 
I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim how great, God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. I ask a few people passages of scripture that meant a lot to those who had passed on. And so I want to share three passages of scripture. They're all going to be familiar to you. They're all, these passages gave comfort and encouragement to those who are now with God, but while they were here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> now, Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He, will, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. John 3:17 For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world but that the world might be saved through him That's peace That's the peace that these brothers and sisters had and it's a peace that's even transcendent now. It's a peace that God offers you. Because in John 14. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. There's a peace that Denise and can have this morning. Liz, there's a peace that you have this morning. The Muniz family, the Branscombe family, there is peace. Don't let Satan take it away. Don't let 
the fears, the worries, the what ifs, the hows, take that away from you. God has chosen to give eternal peace. We choose to accept it. Are you ready to accept God's peace? Now what about those of us or those of you who haven't had a loss in the last year and a half, two years? Who aren't going through a loss of a loved one? What's your role? What's your job? What's God telling you to do? Carry on? Enjoy life? What about the person sitting next to you crying? What about the person next to you who's mourning? What's your job? Well, God will take care of them. How does God take care of people today? If not through us. What's going to happen when you have a loss? What are you going to expect from your brothers and sisters who sit in these pews or in these chairs on Sunday morning? I'm going to expect a lot from them. Because they're supposed to have Jesus living in them. And they're supposed to have this peace that will help me get through my time. So what are you going to do for those who are mourning today? Where's your love? Where's your empathy? Where's your peace? Are you sitting on it? Are you going to share it? Are you going to reach out? Are you going to say, my brother, my sister, I'm here to help you. And one of the least effectual things you can say is, what can I do for you? Because what would you say if someone said that to you? I'm okay. There's nothing. And you know they're lying. Because you'd be lying. Because there is a need. But they're not going to tell you what that need is. But when you care enough to find out what that need is, when you spend time, when you visit, when you share, when you look, you'll find out what the needs are. God will direct you if you let him lead you. And then you can help bring healing to those who are mourning. What are you going to do? How many of us are going to get up, say something nice, and walk out the door this morning? Maybe we'll stop and get something to eat first. But we'll say something nice, and then we won't think about it until next week, maybe. When we, if we see him next week, we'll think about, oh, yeah, that's right. This is the time we have to be a family. This is a time when we have to pull together. When you take a church this side, you take the number of people who have had losses, it's amazing. How much pain this church has endured. So, Nearly all of us have been prepared to help someone else because we've all had to go through it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do this morning? What we're going to do right now is we're going to stop and pray. And then if, uh, while we're praying, if uh, we can get the worship team to be ready to sing that last song. So that we can get ourselves prepared to serve God.
There's a time for everything. The time for us to serve God, to serve the mourning, to serve the hurting, to save, serve those who have lost someone is now. This is the time. What are you going to do with your time? Let's pray. Father in heaven, you have ways of stirring us. And Father, that email that I received this week has stirred my heart. It's made me feel a little guilty and a little ashamed that I haven't done more to help those, to be a comfort for those who are hurting. So I ask, Father, that you forgive me for that negligence and for that insensitivity. And that, Father, that you will spur me on, that you will prick my heart so that I will serve those who need service, who need being tended to, who need a wound healed. So I pray, Father, that for those who are hurting in this assembly, that they know that you're here that your people are here to help them through this time of darkness. Father, I, I love you, and I love these people. Help me to serve them fully. For all this, I ask and plead with the Spirit's groanings in the name of Jesus. Amen. If we can all stand, please.